It's Conduit News Radio with Paul Harrell. The reason I wanted you to come on today, well, there are many reasons. Uh, Hannah's a regular on the uh, Dave Ellsworth show, too. Yes. So she's just amazing. But you, Hannah, you came into the Republican Party uh, in college. You were the president of College Republicans. Yes. And that's where I met you because I was on a speaking engagement and you brought, you asked some college Republicans to come with you. Uh, there were very few there. I wonder, you know, being a Republican on a college campus these days can't be that easy. It's not. Um, I do think we have it easier, especially in Northeast Arkansas, than other places around the country, just because as a whole, that area is fairly conservative. Mm -hmm. Um, However, it was interesting because, like you said, we have a culture of corruption right now Mm -hmm. um, in Arkansas politics. Right. Well, that can be viewed as a good and as a bad thing. It's a good thing for me because it's the only reason that I care so much today. The fact that there is so much corruption in Arkansas is the reason that I'm sitting in this chair today because it's the only reason I got disengaged in Arkansas politics. So I came in because of the corruption, and that is when I decided I need to make a difference. This has got to change, and that's when I ran for college Republican chair. Mm -hmm. And at that point, you're put in a very difficult situation because you're told at all costs to get the Republicans elected. Mm -hmm. Well, how do you, when you are a Republican, you believe in the Republican Party platform Mm -hmm. and you live and die by the conservative values that are in it. How do you lead a group of people to a candidate that you know is notorious for bait and switch, Trojan horses, and you know the dealings are doing on the backside? Right. How do you lead a group of people down that rabbit hole when that person is the only option? Right. And at the same time, with the culture of corruption comes the culture of acceptance. Because especially when you are young, all any senator, representative, anyone in that power is somebody that we look up to because they're older than us, they're wiser than us. They've been where we were before. And so we have no reason not to believe what they say is true and no reason not to look up to them. Exactly. (laughs) And there's and when you are a conservative in college, there's not many people that believe like you do amongst your peers. So you have to turn to those people who are older than you. So how do you do that when those people are corrupt? And so as far as the acceptance goes, they accept what they say and what they do because it's all they know, it's all they see, it's all they have to follow. So when you are someone like me who is educated on what's happening, how do you tell your followers or your, I wouldn't call my constituents, but I feel as though they're my responsibility, how do you tell them the truth without losing their trust because you're not saying the same things the leaders are saying. Exactly. So it's a very tough situation to be in. But at the same time, it's empowering because we are so young and we are so impactful. If, if we know the truth, it could send shockwaves in amongst the oldest among us. So it was a very interesting, bittersweet situation. Um, I took it as an opportunity to empower us and empower myself. And because of that, I had opened the doors to amazing opportunities. And we're so excited about that. Yes. So on that front, because when you came into the Republican Party, you know, I, I, I talked to you and you, you told me you had these visions of grandeur about how wonderful it was going to be. And then you get in there and you see, you know, we've got the corruption, just like the Democrat Party has its share. OK, the Republicans aren't alone in this. We all that. And we're going through a purification process. I call this purifying the party. I think every party has to go through this space because I don't want this to seem like Republican bashing. I'm a, I am a Republican. I was genetically Republican. My mother will tell you. Yeah, I was a Republican in the womb. But uh, so, you know, and I'm, and I'm proud to be a, a conservative. I really am. Uh, so I'm, I'm just looking at this and going, OK, it's a good thing. We're, we're purifying the party. It's a good thing. It's, it's, I'm, not, I'm not glad that we've discovered that we've got a number of Republican uh, lawmakers who have been, uh, you know, disobeying the law. But I am glad that they were caught and that they're being dealt with because that shows that we are we are willing to get up, you know, step up and, and uh, eliminate our, our problems. But there was so much division in the party, even before the corruption issue. We've got this division between the conservative base uh, and then the more, I call it the more liberal, the, the more moderate uh, Republican uh, side. So, and you've been kind of pulled in, in between those two. That's an understatement. <laughs> <laughs> right. right. Um, it's very interesting how, especially when you get thrust into a power position amongst the party, how you have to be very careful to toe the line. Right. Because you've got to stay, you have, no matter what, no matter what pressure you see, you have to stay true to yourself and what you believe in. Mm-hmm. But you almost have to play their game to an extent. You have to not conform to them. But you don't know the times I have been told I'm not a common sense conservative or not, <laughs> not, I'm not a common sense Republican. Republican right. 
Um, that was interesting. I don't. Okay. I, I would think a common sense Republican is conservative, and I'm a conservative, and there's that. Right. Um, but it's just so interesting how it's divided all the way down. You have the people who want to follow the establishment, and just because so and so says it's right, that means it's right, and that's how it's going to be. And you do it because it's almost the cool thing within the party to do. Right. But opposition is not necessarily welcome, even if it may be believed. Do you believe in uh, principle? Yes. Or party over principle? Principle. Principle. I believe that so, I, I love my party Republicans because of the believe, principle. Right. But there are a lot of Republicans who believe it's party only. You know, party right. over, just party, period. Once the primary is over, no matter what, you support the uh, the Republican nominee. Yes. And yes, of course, my, my, my objective is that we would have a total Republican control and continue Republican control of the House, the Senate, the governor's office. But, but just because someone has an R in front of their name does not right. mean they're a Republican. And that's what we, we have a problem within our party, not only in this state, but nationally. President Trump's biggest problems right now on, on passing the agenda that we sent him to pass are Republicans. Right. Yeah, not so behaving like not Republicans. Not behaving like Republicans. Right. I will say I'm encouraged right now because I think we got to almost to rock bottom. And now, well, look, how do you know? Where is rock bottom? At? <laughs> when we're all taken over by the Democrats. But, <laughs> um, but we're almost at a turning point because so much light is being shed on the corruption. Right. You can only go up from here. So never, you know, to my fellow Republicans, never look at this as a bad thing. This is a good thing. We can only go up from here. Right. This is a good thing. So much corruption has had the light shed on it because it can only get better we may be the 49th poor state in the country but that is 48 more spots that we can tick up the ladder right and i think as long as we keep fighting the good fight and we do not get discouraged it will happen if we put our principles in place right that was a quotable quote i think we need to say that when you know you've hit rock bottom when the republicans have been taken over by democrats and i think we just need to add a few words to that sense when the republicans <laughs> have been taken over by democrats pretending to be republicans yes there there's the kicker like, that's, that's what the it's... i think i'm going to write that down and put that's a great twitter quote okay so uh it's 6 20 we've got to take a quick break when we come back we're going to talk to anna about this whole uh, millennial uh, movement of embracing socialism it scares me to death so that with hannah webb right after this break stay with us Welcome back, folks. Thank you so much for uh, choosing to start your day with us. I'm Jan Morgan filling in for Vacationing Paul Harold. He will be back next Monday. Uh, if you are just now joining us, we have with us Hannah Webb and uh, then by phone, Tim Loggains, who is going to be representing Patriots of Acts 46 organization. And Tim is going to be talking with us about the enhanced carry legislation. And he'll be coming up at 7.30, I mean, 6.30, excuse me. But right now, I wanted to touch with Hannah on this whole millennial embracing of socialism, you know, it, it really hit home. I knew that so many millennials were beginning to, to embrace that. We watched it on TV. But then when Alexandra Ocasio-Cortez hit the scene and won her race in New York, and then when she started appearing with Bernie Sanders, and I saw the massive crowds, it was like my worst nightmare became a reality. What is it, Hannah? You're a millennial. Uh, what is it about millennials that, that is causing them to embrace socialism? Right. Well, I always have to preface when I'm going to talk bad about millennials that I have the utmost faith and hope in us, and I do think that we're going to go on to do great things. I don't think we're, we're the fall. <laughs> I do not think we're the fall of society by any means. Okay. But with every generation comes its flaws. Um, I have a lot of issues with the Casio Cortez. Um, aside from her socialist platform, that's a conversation for another day. But as far as us embracing her so much, so I think, and even amongst um, Republicans my age, things like gay marriage, things like um, marijuana use, they don't care so much about it anymore. Um, and it's not because they necessarily want to practice those things or that they want to be a part of those things. They just really don't care if other people are doing it. And so as far as social issues go, they're more left wing, they're more center left. So if the Republican Party wanted to reach the millennials and transform them, they would have to be more moderate socially not, or accepting. Right. Not necessarily accepting, accepting or embracing or advocating for, but maybe more of just a tolerance for it. Tolerance. Um, maybe not so much, more, not that we bash them, I don't think that, but more so along with the ne negative connotations surrounding those issues mm -hmm. and more of just an indifference towards them. But I think with those social issues, 
comes the economic issues with the Socialist Party. So that's what I think ropes in the majority of millennials is they believe in social progressiveness. And with that right now, within the progressive movement, is socialism. And so it just kind of gets tacked on as a pair. But why is that? What? Why is it that they would support this concept of, you know, you don't have to work and let somebody else work and they you don't can get, get part of their money? They don't get it. They don't understand capitalism. I truly wonder if some people, if you sat through an economics class, there's no doubt that capitalism works. I remember when I was in ninth grade in my economics class, how could anyone ever support socialism or communism? It can never work. Principally, it can never work. Well, it never has worked. Exactly. Throughout history. It's like, okay, so it's been a, socialism has been a colossal failure throughout history, world history. So if you know your history, you, you understand that it's not going to work. It didn't work anywhere else. It's not going to work in America. So, well, I don't know about other high schools around the country, but I know if you go to my alma mater and you walk down the history hall, you've got a couple coaches showing movies because they don't want to teach. Mm -hmm. So there's a whole other issue in and of itself. I do not think people understand the principle behind economics and they don't understand how dangerous that could be. Do they country. understand the Constitution and the Bill of Rights? No. You know, because because no. millennials are notorious right now for wanting to stifle free speech. They they don't believe in the First Amendment unless it, it unless your speech it goes along with their ideas. Right. If it, if it's offensive to them in any way, then it then you're not allowed to say it. That that's basically the general millennial. Position. I don't at all think people. I don't think that you could walk up to anyone in the street and ask them what are what what are the ten Bill of Rights. They have they no. Wouldn't know. Okay, so, no so we're, we're failing in, in, in our schools in teaching people the, the Constitution and Bill of Rights and why they are so critical to the foundation of this country and to liberty uh, worldwide. Because, because the world watches us. The world watches us. We are that shining beacon of liberty. And if we ever lose that, what is left for the world to hope for? It's a scary thought. Is scary what thought, is left? Which is why I, which is now back to why I'm terrorized when I see uh cortez appearing with bernie sanders well here's the thing it. philosophical economic issues don't make twitter feed they don't no. make facebook hot 10 second video those aren't the things that are being pushed to my right. generation we live in 15 second sound bites speaking of seconds and sound bites we are hitting a hard break right now that we're going to have to take so hannah webb is going to stay with us and then we're joined by tim loggins at 6 30 talking about the enhanced carry legislation stick around <laughs>